Hello, everybody. Welcome back to It's United Way. Today we're going to be doing the United Way news show, gathering all your latest Manchester United news and, of course, transfer rumours. Uh, first of all, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, before we get stuck into the video, please hit that subscribe button. We're not that far away from 400 subs and a lot of exciting content coming up. Uh, and also check out our schedule, which we have one more bit of content left, and that's on Sunday. So make sure to go and check it out. Uh, so we'll start off, and it's about for bit, it's from Fabrizio Romano. He said, is it important to clarify the money? No, they're not going to spend crazy money. Good money, yes, but not something mad or crazy. That was from, of course, Fabrizio. We all know Manchester United during the years have spent stupid money. Um, example, Paul Pogba, for instance, Harry Maguire, um, maybe maybe overpaid for Lindelof, uh, Diogo the law. I mean... I wouldn't say that was more for, you know, overpaying, but we could have maybe got someone else. Um, maybe Fred, I think, as well. We might have overpaid for a slight bit. Um, and, you know, Manchester United looking at the likes of Frankie De Jong. Um, obviously, they were looking at Christian Eric, or not Christian Eriksen, Darren Nunez, but he went to Liverpool. We have to kind of start looking at these players and the money that we got, which it's not much, let's be honest, it's not much money that Manchester United have to spend in the transfer window. And I really feel like if Man United don't spend crazy money, there's a good chance we could obviously get a few signings in the, the summer transfer window. And then we can look at the January transfer window if, I don't know, it's too late or do you want to wait a bit longer to sign a player? I was speaking of signings where... Well, rumours, if you want to say. Um, wouldn't say. Uh, it's about Anthony, who is, of course, Ajax winger. It, it is my, you know, they're exploring the possibility of signing Anthony. He has been discussed internally and is a name Ten Hag always cons- has always considered. Still no bid, but the players' agents have been in Europe in the past months, um, meeting with many clubs. Again, that's from Fabrizio. You know, Anthony would honestly be a player that I would really like at Manchester United. Uh, you know, he's, he's he's still young, uh, probably even in his um his prime. Uh, price budget could his price tag maybe could be the this the problem, but you can negotiate to around 40 million for him. I think he's worth about 50, 60, so you can negotiate with him, uh, especially with Ten Hag as well there. Him and Ten Hag have a very good relationship, of course, because Ten Hag managed some at Ajax, so there's a good chance that there that we could get Anthony. But Anthony is a player that I would honestly love to come to Manchester United. We need a right winger. Uh, I think he's a left-footed right winger as well, which is handy. Um, we don't have many of those, so he could come in handy. He has speed, he has, he's fast, strength. As I said, he's young, probably not even in his prime. So, yeah, definitely um, he'd be a player that I would be interested in inside him. But listen, if 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 we do miss out on it, it would be a shame. But it's a player that is good and I'd really like to come to Manchester United. Um, and if Ten Hag does get him, I feel like that would be a big sign of Manchester United. It would also be a good signing as well because, as I said, he's not a player that you'd, uh, you would... He's not a player that's... Talk about much, but he is good. But Ajax, um, pretty sure he's also Brazilian. So I'm not saying Brazilians are the best players in the world or at him, but he'd have a good relate. Anthony would also have a good relationship with Fred, who's also Brazilian. So, and then I'm not looking at where he's from. I'm just looking at his stats, how good he is, his weaknesses, and his relationship with Ten Hag and what he can bring to the football club. And he, what I've seen and what I've heard. It's it'd be honestly a brilliant sign of Manchester United to get. Uh, so more news, Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag, by the way, let us know in the comments below whether you would like Anthony and Manchester United or not, and let us know why. Eric Ten Hag, uh, more news, uh, this is from Time Sport. Eric Ten Hag moved to shut down suggestions that there was a clause, there was a clause in his contract that prevented him um, from taking too many of us former squadsman, you know it. It is understood, however, there is a gentleman's agreement in place that he will not go to the team. Now, I've always said this, we can't rob them blind. You know, we've just got Van der Gaag, who was recently a part, he was part of uh, Ten Hag's backroom staff at Ajax. Now, we took, uh, we took their, probably their best manager on Eric Ten Hag over, obviously. Um, so I, I definitely think that 
sign Anthony or Timber, one of those, and stop stop there, really, because you don't want to rub the blind, you know. And in that case, you might as well just call us Ajax oh, United or something like that. So we have more news about Drury and Timber and Pau Torres. Uh, Ajax wants around 45 to 50 million euros for Drury and Timber, and Pau Torres' release clause is around 55 to 60 million euros. But Villarreal could be open to negotiate for something less. That was from Fabrizio. Yeah, listen, honestly, if the uh, on, thing is about Drury and Timber, He's not tall. Pau Torres is tall. There's not much difference in that price range and that price tag. Uh, apologies. So I honestly think we should go for Pau Torres if he's only worth that much. I know people will be looking at Timber. He was Ajax, but imagine what a good transfer window that would be. We get a defender, we get Anthony, and then we get a midfielder, and maybe De Jong or Christian Eriksen or someone like that. Um, and maybe another left back, or you could throw another right back in there. It's also a striker, hopefully, that, that's that's definitely needed. And I feel like if we get Pau Torres, that would be a big boy signing. Uh, I feel like Manchester United would be moving into some sort of uh, some sort of normality, some sort of once so some part some sort of a football club because the Glazers own us, so we're never gonna be a club until they go. Um so yeah, definitely. Pau Torres would be a player that I would be interested in. As I said, he has the height, the strength. Yeah, he's still young, might have the experience, but he's did well for Villarreal in all competitions. So I'd fancy him to come to United. Let us know in the comments below whether you would like Pau Torres and Manchester United or Drury and Timber. Let us know. We'd like to hear your uh, your thoughts and all these stuff. So we have this one uh, from Rich Fay, who is another source. The value of Manchester United has dropped by over £1.3 billion pounds after shares fell to a record low on Monday. By the close uh, of play on June 14, shares of Manchester United were trading at just 11.07 US dollars, and that's a drop of 47% since October 2021. Uh, yeah, honestly, I'm just not surprised. You know, the Glazers are honestly the worst owners in the world. I can't see anyone worse than them. Uh, some teams, like say Everton or, you know, Newcastle used to have bad owners or Arsenal, but at least they can sign players and do well with their club and be successful. Uh, I'd listen, that, that's just, a, you know, it, we're, we're dropping. The club is in debt. It hasn't been paid off. We haven't. The Glazers have said they're going to do this, this, this and that. They haven't did it. So it's only a matter of time before the Glazers will leave Manchester United. And to be honest with you, the Ten Hag coming in as well. I have a feeling. I actually have a feeling. I really, really have a good feeling that Eric Ten Hag and the Glazers will have a fall. Now, I really, really do. I'm not saying that Eric Ten Hag, he's not, you know, that will affect his management. But I can see, not fall out, but I can see them having a bit of a... Uh, a disagreement in parts. I can see him definitely, you know, be the manager that will try and, you know, what's kind of face the Glazers and the Glazers will tell him this, this, this. Ten Hag will say, well, you promised me this, 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 you know, give me this, 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 year, this, year, that. I, I can see, no, every manager that has came to this club has had a falling out with the Glazers. And I don't think Ten Hag will be any different. I think Ten Hag will fall out with the Glazers or he'll have a disagreement with them. Because if the Glazers promise him things that, before when he, in the interview, the guy just promised him, You get this player, he's going to get that, he's going to get the back end, all that good stuff. He hasn't got all that good stuff. And now we're looking at we're a few weeks in, like a few weeks in now to the summer transfer window. And um, we didn't even pre sign any players, so might just see you know, it's just the Glazers, honestly. Like, they're, they're I know people aren't going to disagree with me, but. The Glazers need to kind of cop on because if the Glazers keep doing what they're doing and, you know, the, the shares and the things are dropping and the debt is still in a bad position, in a bad situation and you're promising managers this, this, this. They did it with previous managers. That's why they haven't been successful with the club. And Eric Ten Hag, I'm hoping he is successful with the club and can kind of stick two fingers up to the Glazers. Uh, I really, really think that I want to be a matter of time before Ten Hag loses his head, says something to the Glazers, doesn't go well, and I don't know what could happen from there on in, but the Glazers need to cop on because I honestly, I, I hate the Glazers so much. I really, really do. I mean, they own the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're giving all the money to that club. 
to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but they're not bothering about Manchester United. So, to be honest with you, Glazers, we know you love your money, we know you're arseholes, but please move on and go to, you know, focus on other man, you know, other Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Stop taking money out of Manchester United and bring them somewhere else. The money that comes with Manchester United stays in Manchester United. The money that comes into Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that stays there. They don't even think of that. They love the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but they don't love Manchester United Football Club. Glazers, get out of my club. You're a disgrace. And I really, really can't wait for the day that you live because honestly, I have no love or sympathy for them. I just, I cannot deal with the Glazers. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, powered up now talking about these clowns. I don't want to talk about them. Uh, you know, man, you know, it's like a circus and the Glazers are clowns. So it's pretty, it, it really, really is, isn't it? Man, you know, it's like a circus and the Glazers are the clowns. And to my, the players that come into the club are, they're part of the circus, but they don't want to be part of the circus. So the Glazers, whatever you do, fuck off because I don't like you anymore. Please just do some, be, be good owners, anything. Just give money to the club. You're not giving anything into the club. And that's why people don't like you. I don't like you. Never will like you. We'll move on. Manchester United and Tottenham have held substantive talks with Christian Eriksen and his agents. With the two clubs, the favourites to sign him, Eric and Haggis, hoping to sign both Eriksen and Frankie Young. The summer that was from Scott Wilson, the Echo. First of all, excuse me, Christian Eriksen will be a bargain for the club. He's a free agent. He has experience. I like Eriksen. I like Eriksen. Uh, I feel like you should. It's, it's one or the other. Either sign Ericsson or Frankie De Jong. You can't get both because that could just blow the transfer budget out the window. So yeah, definitely, I wouldn't be focused on one or the other. Basically, um, here we go. A bit of news about Frankie De Jong and Paul Lederboil Pogba. Manchester United in the first talks with Eric Ten Hag uh, asked if he wanted to turn out Paul Pogba's contract, but he answered that the number one priority was to sign Frankie De Jong. That source is managing Barca. To be honest with you, look at reading the news about Frankie De Jong these past couple of weeks. I think we're going to sign him. I really, really think Frankie De Jong is going to come to Manchester United Football Club. I'm glad Eric Ten Hag didn't extend Paul Pogba's contract. I think he has a rough idea on not to because of what he's like. Um, so I definitely think that Manchester United will sign uh, Frankie De Jong. I really, really can. I can't see them signing anyone else but Frankie De Jong. In that midfield position, Eric Ten Hag seems to be a big fan of him. Everything I see in the mid- talking about midfielders, it's always you want to get Christian Eriksen and our Frank De Jong, Paul Pogba, for example. I would have liked, you know, he's, you know, his first priority was to sign Frankie De Jong when he got asked about extending Paul Pogba's contract. So I really think I'm honestly 85% confident that we're going to. Boy, Frankie Dion. Would I like him? I would really like him, but that this price tag can be the problem. Speaking of Frankie Dion, this is from Rob Dawson, the SPN producer, reliable source, by the way. It says the feeling with him and you know it is that Barca are actively trying to offload Dion in an effort to raise funds to felicitate their transfer plans for the summer and that it should be reflected in the cost. Uh, again, give us our thoughts. I don't know much to talk about it. Uh, basically, you know, they're trying to sell them but it's just the phones that are the problem basically for Frankie Dion for both clubs to agree uh, here we go Man United have made initial inquiries about to Ajax uh, about the winger Anthony who was well known by Eric Ten Hag having been a regular in his Ajax team over the past two seasons the 22 year old is one of one of a number of players uh, you know it have been looking at as was well Liverpool down Nunes so yeah, I would really like um, Anthony at the club. I explain why. Give your thoughts on that bit of news as well. Uh, really would like Anthony. Definitely be a sh- strong. I'd honestly prefer Anthony over Julian Timber. Uh, so this is from David Ornstein. Definitely a that he's definitely up there with Fabrizio Romano with the new sort with the 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 new top journalist. So it is about Christian Eriksen, by the way. Many other than Soto have made an offer to Christian Eriksen and are among the clubs interested in signing him. The 30 year old Danish playmaker is a free agent after Brentford after his Brentford contract ended. Might you know it's somewhat priority it remains in the young, but other options too. And this is why I would love Christian Eriksen, but I can see us getting Frankie De Jong. Everything I see about the midfield, the Pog bit, Eriksen, anyone, Paul Pop. Bruno Fernandez, it just comes around to 
Frankie De Jong all of a sudden, or anyone, Anthony, even when it's a winger or a striker, comes down to Frankie De Jong. And that's why I can't see us buying Frankie De Jong. Because if you're looking at Manchester United, right, and they're looking at Ericsson, but still, the, the priority remains in De Jong. I know it says other options too, but De Jong's name is always in there. And that's why I can't see us signing De Jong. As I said, I'd like De Jong, but his price tag is the problem for me. Uh, again, Modern FC back at the back at its best. I says his breakdowns are Dumfries, James, Land Robson. I think that is, uh, James Allen Robson. Sorry. So it says Manchester United are more. I'm monitoring Denzel Dumfries. Eric Ten Hag sees him as an attacking fullback who would suit his system. I mean, yeah, I would honestly like Denzel Dumfries. He can be a right wing back, a right back. He, Wam Saku could maybe be either leaving or going out on loan. He definitely will be a yeah, good sign for the club. So this is Telegraph Tucker. It is Manchester United you know, have looked at Anthony, Christopher, and Kunku, and Dan Gilman. Uh, of course, I. You know who to play for, Dan Gilma, Villarreal, Nkuku, Leipzig, Anthony, Ajax. Uh, Ten Hag would also like a right back and a centre half, but other areas are being prioritised for it. I feel like I would have liked Nkuku, price was the problem. Dan Gilma, I don't know much about him, I wouldn't be a big fan of him. So it's of uh, those players, Anthony would be my number one priority alongside De Jong. So this is uh, Martial, who I'm definitely confident that he'll leave the club. It's a shame because he did have a good stage at the club, but fortunately things didn't work out for him. So his Manchester United are hoping to offload Anthony Martial and use any fee towards the cost of a new attacker. That's from Telegraph Tucker. I think it's best we sell Anthony Martial. I mean, he did come out a few weeks ago saying that he would, like a few months ago, before this recent season ended, that he wants to leave the club. Uh, how they're treating him. Again, players love their simply these days. So... I mean, I don't blame, to be honest. Uh, I really think that Manchester United... I think it's actually... No, I don't blame him. I think it's a good thing we're selling him because if he's a rare player that's trying to tr- tr- trying to say that Manchester United are, are this and that, you know, that they're treating him like this, that blah, 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 just go. The fans don't really like you and anymore. And Martial, again, I don't like him or love him. He's still you know, a player, so I still have to go back for him until he leaves us. So, yeah. Let us know what would you do. What would you do to Anthony Marshall? Would you keep him for another season, loan him out again, or sell him? Me, sell him for the money. We need the, the transfer budget to rise. So here we go. Negotiations for Ian Henderson are ongoing between Nottingham Forest and Man United. They want Henderson, and it's now a possibility also considered by the player Fabrizio. Uh, and we also have, I'll get back to Dean, the, the Dean Henderson now. It's probably into the show, the more I'll talk about, because I actually important part about it. This is from Alex Crook. It says, strong sources in Portugal are suggesting Man United are very keen on Porto's Vitinha. You know, they're considering activating his £24 million pound release clause. And I suppose now I hear that that's all fake, so I'm not going to believe it. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I'll say. So here we go. See if Cooper wants to sign my United Dean Henderson on loan. Nottingham Forest are in talks with the United with United over a potential move for Dean Henderson. He will be made available for a season's loan, and Forest have shown strong interest. There are there are there are concerns though over using up one of the two loan transfers permitted in the Premier League. So early into the transfer window, Jay Percy Telegraph, Dean Henderson. That's a sh- on loan, fair enough. Because take their goalie, the Nottingham Forest goalie's leaving. So I, I see why, but. Dean Henderson going to Nottingham Forest. That's really a, that's a downgrade to me. No offense to Nottingham Forest or anything like that. They're 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 rising again. But um, I mean they do have a Champions League in their back pocket or two two one or two Champions Leagues uh, in their back in their in their trophy cabinet or their back pocket more than Man City, I should say. Uh Dean Henderson, I mean listen, I'd like him to get game time at United, but I don't think he will because if you look at the season that they recently had, astonishing season season. I really think without David Day, we would have we wouldn't even be in Conference League, never mind Europa League or Champions League. So I definitely think Dean Henderson going to Nottingham Forest is a down bit of a, a downgrade. But, you know, he's a player that kind of can make his own decisions. And he's just a player that, you know, I feel like you'll have one of those average uh, careers. Uh, now, this is a player that I would really like to say at the club. James Garner, the main United midfielder, could have turned to Nottingham Forest either on a loan or on a permanent basis. That's from J. Percy Telegraph. 
short and sweet. The season Garner had on Nottingham Forest was brilliant. He's comfortable with the ball, takes time, can score goals. We don't have any of that in the deep defensive midfield role. Keep him. That's not the console you do, Frankie. Yeah. Manchester United and Barcelona are still on a way. I'm not going to read that because. So here we go. Nottingham Forest have agreed a deal with Man United to sign Dean Henderson on a loan with the option to buy for £20 million. Pounds. But yeah, if that does go through, best of luck, Dean. But you're really trying to turn your own career, mate. But if you want to get game time, that so be it. Uh, this is actually a surprise me. Andres Pereira is set to return to Manchester United you know, from Flamengo. No intention to trigger the buy option for €10.5 million. Euros. The decision has been made a forced call. As forced call boy, I mean, I remember a few months ago that it was agreed the uh, prayer to Flamingo who got the all who we go, blah blah blah. You now he's back at Man United, so things can change very quick. That's why you can't believe it until he's holding up that short. Uh, so yeah, Manchester United are expected to report themselves at Ajax for the signing of Anthony Ten Hag. Is, Ten Hag believes he's a fantastic player, however, the price tag of Anthony is quite high. Which might not suit the budget of the English club. But, you know, that was from my very way and via the European lad. I mean, I did say his price budget is a bit, price tag is a bit over the top, and I don't think Manchester United would be interested in getting him any point. So, uh, by the way, we're just going to go through the Premier League fixtures. If you haven't already seen them, we're going to go through every single one of them. So, August 20, August 2022, we play Brighton on the 7th, Liverpool, Brentford on the 13th. Liverpool on the 20th, Southampton on the 27th, Leicester on the 30th, then December 20, then December to September, we have Arsenal, Palace, Leeds, October, Man City, Everton, Newcastle, Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham, November, no season month, hopefully Villa and Fulham, December, Nottingham Forest, Wolverhampton Wanderers, January 2023, Bournemouth, Man City, Arsenal, tough month, February, Palace, Leeds, Leicester, Brentford, March 2023, Liverpool, Southampton, Brighton, April 2023, Newcastle, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Chelsea, Spurs and Aston Villa, and May 2023, West Ham, Wolves and Bournemouth and Fulham. Let us know what you think it was and how confident you are for the season coming up. Here we go. Paul Pogba uh, came out yesterday, if you're watching this on a Friday. Uh, he, said, he has said, my thought process is to show Manchester United that they made a mistake in waiting to give me a contract. And to show the other clubs that Manchester United had made a mistake in not offering me a new contract. Uh, he also said, how can you tell a player you absolutely want him and offer him no one? Never seen that. That was the Pogba and Terry, which I'm pretty sure it is. Paul Pogba, shut up. Get out of me, club. Don't speak about a club you're not a part of anymore. If you're not a part of us, good luck. Don't be talking, don't be talking bad about a club that is getting really a taxi so you can go and do well for yourself. You didn't you never played well for the club, you didn't want to play for the club, you never wanted to play for Manchester United. You were doing it for the fame and the money. Let's stop there. So now honestly, I hate when players do that. It's just it's not good. So here we go. Frankie the Young deal again. David Ornstein. Depending on who you speak to, there's an expectation that it will eventually get done and it's a game of poker or Barca who need to raise the funds. That is from Deva Orsai, the Athletic Football Podcast, far about Frankie de Jong. And then we also have Barcelona's objective in the coming days is to intensify contacts with interested clubs in search of an offer for Frankie de Jong. The minimum starting price is about €8 million. Euros. That's, uh, that's been the United Way news show. Frankie de Jong, I'm, pretty, I'm so confident the next time I'll have these new show, we'll have Frankie de Jong. I really, really am. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, hopefully, I'm not throwing any boys in there or anything like that, Reds. Uh, but yeah, that's been the United Way new show. Please li- like, comment, hit that subscribe button, follow our socials Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, Leo will start doing FIFA career modes on that. Back with the United Way FC. So, yes, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, speak to you on Sunday for my United Dream Team. Have a good one.